Hey guys, welcome to Forge. I'm glad you've joined us. Uh, it makes my day, makes my week uh, that you would uh, spend the time and commit the time to, to be with us. Hey guys, Forge is, is about building great men as God defines great. And that means as we become disciples of Jesus Christ, he begins a whole new process to make us equip and mature men following Christ. I'm, I, I give thanks to you and <clears throat> just want you to know that next week is Thanksgiving. There will be no Forge meeting next week. Uh, I'll be uh, with my family on Thanksgiving. I hope you get to be with your family as well. But I want you to know, I give thanks to you uh, for who you are, what God has done in working in your life, and the people that you get to influence. So uh, what a privilege it is <clears throat> that we get to follow Jesus at this time in history. Well, guys, today we conclude our series, Pandemonium, which is talking to us about spiritual warfare. Now, I want you to note something very important. We are ending this series on spiritual warfare, but we're not ending the battle. Uh, the battle continues day in and day out, and it's relentless against us as men following Christ, partly because you're so important. We men, like Adam, have been called to lead our family, to lead in our churches, and to generally be the spiritual leaders of those around us. And so that's why, like Adam, we have been under attack. And so as we conclude this series, uh, I want you to understand that only Jesus is the one who can end this battle once and for all. And he's going to do it at one point in history. Listen to Matthew 24, verse 29. It says this, after the tribulation of those days, and Matthew 24 is about uh, the, the, the end of times. It's called the mini apocalypse. Of Jesus. But immediately after the tribulation of those times, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, uh, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send forth his angels with great trumpet blast, and they'll gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. And it says uh, that no one knows the time when that will take place. And so Jesus ends the mini apocalypse by saying, Be on the alert, for you do not know the day that the Lord will appear. So uh, we have had many series on spiritual warfare at Forge. This one concludes, but the battle continues until Jesus Christ comes back. And that's one reason why Forge is so important, not only the videos, uh, but as we gather together in our Forge groups. Because in a very real sense, Forge is sort of a, a boot camp, a basic training for those who are new to Christ, but it's also an ongoing tactical training base for us as we follow Jesus, because the battle is relentless. The enemy never gives up, and he wants to take men down. Because, catch this, as the men of the church go, so goes the church. That the church and the family never gets beyond the quality of its men. Same is true for a culture. But if men flourish, then women, children, and churches flourish. So understand, that you're important, and that's why the battle against men is so relentless. Well, today, what I want us to see as we look into this uh, uh, last series, uh, last in this series, is to look at one more strategy that Satan typically uses in order to take down men. Uh, with a downtown Zoom group on Tuesdays, I was interacting with uh, the series of uh, uh, number three, as we looked at the 12 strategies of satanic pressure on us. And I said, are there any other strategies that you guys have experienced uh, that, um, that Satan uses on a regular basis to take us men down? One of the guys said, yeah, lust. And that's true. And so what we want to do is we want to take a look at lust today and, and see that that is one of the primary strategies that Satan uses to take men down, to get us out of the game of serving him by fueling our sexual desires. Now, up front, I want you to know 
uh, that, uh, that, that there's good desire and there's bad desire. And the word desire in the New Testament, the Greek word that's used is epithumeo, the verb, uh, and the noun epithumia, desire. And as the Bible unpacks uh, and uses that word desire, we see that there's good desire and bad desire. Let's talk about good desire first. Let me give you a couple of examples. In Matthew 13, verse 17, Jesus says this, For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. The word longed there is the word epithumeo. It's the the verb. They desired to see uh, the fulfillment of the gospel in Jesus' coming, but They didn't get to see it. In 1 Timothy 3.1, we see this. It is a trustworthy statement that if a man aspires to the office of overseer, it is a fine work he desires to do. Epithumeo can be translated long for or desire. And then in 1 Peter 1.12, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves But you in these things, which now have been announced to you through those who preach the gospel by the Holy Spirit, sent from heaven. Things into which angels longed to look. And so so good desire, uh, there is such a thing as good desire. But because we're sinners, we we are not born having good desire. Uh, Where do good desires come from? Well, good desires come from a good God. And so we're born with Adamic sin, the New Testament tells us. Romans 5, check it out if you don't believe me. We're born sinners. And so as a result, uh, there's nothing that we desire that is perfectly good. And there are no works that we do that are perfectly good. What I call God-level good. You say, well, Pete, can't people do something Uh, that is relatively good? Can't even unbelievers do things that are somewhat good? And the answer to that is yes, of course. Relatively speaking, uh, unbelievers can do good works, but not God-level works. They they can't have God-level desires. Why? Because their nature is fallen. It's corrupted. It's depraved, to use New Testament language. And so the reality is, uh, guys, and the fact is, some sinners are worse than others, of course. Um, uh, I, I think that Karl Marx fueling uh, in his philosophy a Lenin, a Stalin, a Hitler, a Mao, uh, uh, a Idi Amin, and a Pol Pot. Interestingly, all of those leaders had drunk deeply at Marxist, Leninist, and so the reality is, is uh, uh, some sinners are worse than others, but all of us are pretty well-practiced sinners. It comes naturally. You don't have to encourage me. Uh, it comes quite naturally to us. And so the reality is, is that we don't sin uh, and then become sinners. We sin because we are sinners. Again, you don't believe me, go to Romans 5. Uh, that's how we're born. The great news is that sinners can be transformed. People with uh, imperfect desires, fallen desires, uh, sinful desires, and therefore do sinful works, can be transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the phenomenal good news. And that's the good news we adhere to at Forbes, that through faith in Jesus Christ and faith in him alone, a man is radically transformed. And so he can have good desires that end up in Holy Spirit produce good works. Uh, Good works that honor and glorify God of the universe. And so the New Testament says that good longings, good desires, epithumeo, uh, those things come when the Holy Spirit is working through us to produce good desires. But so often we have and Satan uses bad desire, epithumia, in the noun form, the same word, but in the noun form, often speaks of our 
lusts, our bad desires. And so let me give you a few verses to show that. In Romans chapter 1, verse 24, the apostle Paul says, Therefore God gave them up to uh, vile impurity in the lusts of their heart so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. In other words, people who are born sinners going down the road to sin become progressively more sinful. Their lusts, their epithumia, their bad desires take over more and more and more of their life. Romans 6, 12. After the gospel, the Apostle Paul says, therefore, sin is not to reign in your, in your mortal body that you should obey its lust. Oh, there it is. In Christ, because the Holy Spirit is now in us and because Jesus has triumphed over sin, death, and hell, We do not any longer have to kowtow, bow down to, give in to the epithumia, the bad desires that are still within us as sinner saints. And then Romans 7, 7. uh, Boy, I tell you, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul uh, is so powerful. And he says, uh, well, actually in 6, he says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace might increase? No, we don't have to. But Paul the Apostle struggled with this whole idea of lust as well himself because the sin nature was within him. Where does lust come from? Even if we're born again, where does it come from? Well, we are born again, and Christ's new nature is within us. But still within us is that old nature that rears its ugly head and continues to exercise influence in our in our life. And so we have three major enemies that we talk a lot about around Ford. The world system, our own flesh, the sinful flesh that remains, and the devil. In this pandem- pandemonium series, we've been talking about satanic strategy. And so the world, the flesh, and the devil are our enemies, and all three of those uh, elements can fuel our lust, our epithemia, our bad desire. Uh, and, and, and I guess you might even say at this point, Pete, why is lust so bad? What's the big deal? Well, at one level, it's important to understand that lust, or more particularly sexual temptation, the lust, the strong, controlling, overmastering, strong pull towards sexual a deviancy away from the biblical values given to us, uh, it's sin. And whenever we allow sin to control us, it leads us down the path. Uh, it, it builds neural pathways in, in our brain. It leads us in a way that leads to control by the evil one uh, and, and, and destroys relationships, destroys our heart, our soul, our service. And it can even, of course, render us unuseful to the master in the extending of his kingdom. And so lust, bad desires, can become over uh, mastering desires that control us. Uh, and, And so the question then is, can we control our lust? Is there any way that we can have victory over our lusts? Good news, yes. And I want to offer to you uh, 10 reasons, um, or 10 ways that we can pursue victory over sexual temptation, lust, epithumia, in our lives. First of all, number one, admit uh, that you struggle at times with sexual temptation and with lust. With men, sexual temptation is very strong in us. It's perhaps the greatest area that Satan seeks to strategize and get us out of a uh, out of line, out of alignment with God. And so the first strategy toward victory is admit that you have sexual temptations. I mean, the reality is take the demon, kiss the demon on the lips and say, yes, I struggle with lust. I am one of those guys uh, that struggles with lust. Um, if you say you have no issue with sexual temptation, then I know you lie about other things. Yeah, we just need to admit it. Uh, grace 
of the gospel and out enables us to be authentic with the, with the battles that we really face. None of us is above that. Uh, we all have it. So admit that you struggle with lust from time to time and at sometimes more than at other times. Number two, the way to victory is to realize that lust and sexual temptation is 100% among men. So relax. You're not that unique. <laughs> You're not unique in this regard. All of us have it. And I love the verse that I memorized years ago that has helped me so much. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There is no temptation, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, and will with the temptation provide a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Not only to bear it, but to not give in to it. Uh, This verse has been a life verse for me as a male following Jesus Christ, and I commend it to you. Memorize it, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 needs to be in your memory banks up there. So number one, admit that you struggle with it. Relax and and realize uh, that every man struggles with temptation. That is the way to begin the path to victory. Number three, pray for power. Pray for power. Someone has said that prayer is not preparation for the work. Prayer is the work. And the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray without ceasing. There ought to be an ongoing dialogue as we follow Christ. Great men have that ongoing dialogue with the living God 24-7, 365. We just have that. We start it in the morning in our daily appointment with God, and we never let it up. We we develop the discipline of knowing uh, that, that we can connect with our Father, with our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, all day, every day, and we keep the dialogue going. And so prayer is a means for us to fight the enemy. In fact, prayer is how we fight like men. Jesus told us in uh, the Lord's Prayer, uh, deliver us from evil. One of the things that we're to pray is, Lord, Deliver us from evil. More literally, deliver us from the evil one. And that's why praying the Lord's Prayer every day in the morning is a good part of your spiritual discipline of the dog time. Because that reminds us as we get up from our desk or table and go out into the world that we're going out into the battlefield. Another thinker put it this way, instead of carrying the world on your shoulders, uh, talk to the one who carries the universe on his. I love that. Uh, and so prayer is a, a powerful weapon. It's fighting like a man. Uh, prayer is not just for little kids. Uh, it's not just for women. It's the way men fight. You're going to see uh, uh, a picture of Billy at the end of our talk today, and I'll tell you a story about him at the very end. Number four, we gain victory when we confess uh, our sins, when lust takes over and, 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 and we do go down the road of lust and we give into it in one way, shape, uh, or, or form, whether it's mentally walking through an unfaithful act with, with another woman, whether it's pornography, whether we indulge with it, or whether mentally we're going on, uh, on and on. God knows. And so it's important for us to gain victory that we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9. Another life verse to memorize. If we confess our sins, and to confess, the word literally means to say the same thing as. God knows what what we have done in our minds, the sins in our minds, or the sins of omission, the sins of commission. He knows those. And so confession is merely uh, agreeing with God what he already knows to be true. But there's a dynamic process when we confess our sins to God. We sort of say, Lord, you're right. I did that, and it was wrong. And so when we go down the mental pathways of lust, giving in to sexual temptation, um, even in in actual fact, confession is absolutely necessary uh, toward victory. Because if not, Satan will hold it over. And if we confess it and come out with it, 
Satan can't use it to blackmail us uh, and, and to say, hey, if you don't give me mine, I'm going to let everybody know about it. Well, important to let it go for victory. So as we, uh, as we want to beat sexual temptation and lust, epithumia from taking over, we have to admit that we struggle with it, realize uh, that sexual temptation is 100% among men, and I, I submit women. We need to pray for power, and we need to confess it when we fail. But then also, we need to, number uh, five, depend on the gospel. And, and we need to understand that in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we actually have the power available to us. Go to Romans 6, where the Apostle Paul says, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace might increase? And then he says, May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Memorize Romans chapter 6. The gospel is the raw, living power of the God of the universe. And what he says to us, what Paul teaches in Romans chapter 6, even though in Romans 7 he says, I still sin and I still struggle with temptation, Romans 6 says that we have been freed from sin's condemnation and sin's control. Men, never miss it. Never forget that. That in the gospel of Jesus Christ, Romans 6 teaches, we are free from sin's condemnation and sin's control of our lives so we don't have to continue to allow lust to over-control our lives. It's going to be a factor. It's going to be a factor, like the professor in the seminary said to his students, I told you about in a previous installment of this series in Pandemic, when the student asked him, Prof, when does sexual temptation go away? And he was about 75 years of age, and the prof said, I don't know, son, but it's sometime after 75. <laughs> and so that's a reality. It's going to be with us. Uh, but but we, we can conquer it, and we can lessen its impact in our life. Number seven, in order to gain victory over epithumia, lust, we need to lean on our fire team. Uh, Galatians 6.2 says, bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. And one of our burdens, frankly, is this temptation that we are under. Uh, that's why I need two to, two to four guys to fight for me. I need two to four guys to share my burden, to carry the weight. God ultimately carries the weight of the universe on his shoulders, but I need some brothers that are walking alongside me when, uh, when issues get too much for me. So lean on your fire team and allow grace to begin to open you up to telling the true issues that you're struggling with, with those two to four trustworthy guys uh, that love you and will fight for you, uh, fight for your faith. Number eight, be wise. If you want to you win over epithumia, lust, temptation, and the, the temptations of lust, then you got to be wise. Uh, we might put it this way. If you don't go where you shouldn't go, you won't do what you shouldn't do. We need wisdom, skill. Uh, and, and guys, there's places you shouldn't go. Physical places. Maybe there are bars. Other places where you shouldn't go. Uh, where lust will be fueled, uh, and several of those places are online. Uh, the number one um, industry online is pornography. And, and so, guys, we need to understand that we can't go to certain places that fuel our lust. Maybe it's TV shows. Maybe it's talking to a neighbor. Maybe it's friends that fuel your lust. Guys, the reality is um, we got to be careful where we go and where we put our head what we put our eyes onto. An old preacher put it this way. He said, if you give the devil a stick, he ought to beat you with it. <laughs> and it's important for us to understand that. Um, a lot of times, I have to take responsibility that I'm the number one. It's my flesh. I'm the one that's fueling my own temptation by what I allow to go on in my head or where I put myself. A.R. Bernard put it this way, when the devil tempts you, he shows you only the benefits, never the consequences. He shows you the short-term rewards, not the long-term cost. 
that crucial for us to understand. And so be wise. Number nine, determine to become equipped and mature as a man following Christ. Determine that you are going to apply these, these uh, strategies to defeat the control of epithumia, lust in your, in your life. Determine that. Draw a line in the sand that because of the love of God for you, because he wants the best for you, because Jesus says the way is narrow uh, and that his way is always good and acceptable and perfect, that, that you are going to determine by God's grace with your fire team, but you are going to determine to become a man that does not allow lust, overmastering desire, to control you. It can be done by the power of the living God in us. But we men have to draw a line in the sand and determine that it will be so. And then number 10, we need to also couple that with our, our, uh, the, the fact that we're going to fight like a man. And a man prays to defeat the evil one. Let me tell you about Billy and then we're done. Uh, one of our, our, our table leaders in Oviedo uh, told me that he was on a, a work project, and this old guy named Billy uh, came up. Vietnam vet, uh, a Christian man who was fighting alcoholism, came up to him and was wearing a cross, a crusader cross, and was really excited about that. They were talking about their, his spiritual walk, and he says, you know, the one thing that I struggle with the most right now is prayer. I, 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 I don't even, it's hard for me to pray. And uh, our table leader said, Hey, I want, I want to tell, tell you something. Uh, that at Forge, we heard the message that prayer is fighting. And Billy stood back and he said, huh. As a former, uh, as a Vietnam vet, as a warrior, uh, as a man wearing the Crusader cross, he said, now that speaks to me. Uh, and, and our table leader said, yeah, that's fighting like a man. Fight like a man is prayer. To defeat the enemy that wants to take you down. So guys, I want to end this by saying, fight with me, fight for me, I'll fight for you, but let's fight like a man so that the enemy doesn't you take it to heart. Let's pray. Father, be with us in a powerful way. Enable us to be your men who are not overcome by epithumia, by lust. May we be filled with your spirit and controlled by your power. For the good of everyone around us, for the glory of your name and the extension of your kingdom, as we pray in Jesus' strong name, amen. Well, guys, thank you for uh, tuning in to us today at Forge. I thank you for your partnership. Uh, we need you to stay on the road. These have been tough economic times for everybody I know, and some of you can't be partners. But in order for us to move boldly, energetically, uh, with excellence and extension, the three E's that we're thinking about for the next year, uh, energy, excellence, and extension, we do need your support. So think about giving us a year-end gift, and it's tax-deductible. Go to forgetruth.com, and you can become a partner. Thank you for your partnership, your friendship, and spend some time in a Forge group this year. God bless you. See you soon.